Oh, hello, good afternoon. So my name is Raj. I'm the learning disability nurse from Park in Dagenham. And uh, today I'm going to speak about um, coronavirus, um, the type of illness it is, symptoms, signs and symptoms, and how we can prevent uh, from spreading. Coronavirus is a type of illness. Um, uh, it is caused by a virus called coronavirus or COVID-19. It is the same family of virus that cause common cold and severe respiratory disease like SAR hormones. As you have heard, there are now a number of people in the UK who have got it and it is spreading and it's spreading easily. Next, I'm going to play a video clips will explain a bit more into this um, how about more about the coronavirus. Or coronavirus disease discovered in 2019, which is responsible for a global pandemic. COVID-19 is caused by SARS-CoV-2, or Severely Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, because it's genetically similar to the SARS coronavirus, which was responsible for the SARS outbreak in 2002. Now, coronaviruses that circulate among humans are typically benign, and they cause about a quarter of all common cold illnesses. In COVID-19, what happened is that there was a coronavirus circulating among bats, which are a natural animal reservoir, and it mutated just enough to start infecting an intermediate host, the pangolin, an animal that looks like a cross between an anteater and an armadillo. In late 2019, the coronavirus mutated again and started causing disease in humans. The outbreak began in China, but has since spread around the world. The next video clip will talk about, um, about the signs and symptoms of coronavirus. Day-to-day -day symptoms of COVID-19. Before proceeding, please note that this general overview is compiled for initial self-assessment only and may vary for each individual. If you are not feeling well, you should immediately consult a medical practitioner to have an accurate diagnosis and proper treatment of COVID-19. The typical daily symptoms are concluded from the study of 138 patients at Zhongyang Hospital of Wuhan University and another study involving 135 patients from Jinyin Tan Hospital and 56 patients from Wuhan Pulmonary Hospital. These symptoms are broken down into day one to day two. The beginning symptoms are similar to the common cold, with a mild sore throat and neither having a fever nor feeling tired. Patients can still consume food and drink as usual. Day three, the patient's throat starts to feel a bit painful. Body temperature reads at around 36.5 degrees Celsius. Although it's uncommon, other symptoms like mild nausea, vomiting or mild diarrhea are possible to set in. Day four, throat pain becomes more serious. Other symptoms like feeling weak and joint pain start to manifest. The patient may show a temperature reading between 36.5 degrees to 37 degrees Celsius. Day five to six, mild fever starts. The patient show a temperature reading above 37.2 degrees Celsius. The second most common symptom, dry cough, also appears. Dyspnea or breathing difficulty may occur occasionally. Most patients in this stage are easily feeling tired. Other symptoms remain about the same. These four symptoms are among the top five key indications of COVID-19, according to the final report of the initial outbreak conducted by the Joint Mission of China and WHO. Day seven, the patients that haven't started recovering by day seven get more serious coughs and breathing difficulty. Fever can get higher, up to 38 degrees Celsius. Patients may develop further headache and body pain or worsening diarrhea if there's any. Many patients are admitted to hospital at this stage. Day eight to nine. On the eighth day, the symptoms are likely to be worsened for the patient who has coexisting medical conditions. Severe shortness of breath becomes more frequent. Temperature reading goes well above 38 degrees. In one of the studies, day nine is the average time when sepsis starts to affect 40% of patients. Day 10 to 11. Doctors are ordering imaging tests like chest x-ray to capture the severity of respiratory distress in patients. 
Patients are having loss of appetite and may be facing abdominal pain. The condition also needs immediate treatment in ICU. Day 12 to 14. For the survivors, the symptoms can be well managed at this point. Fever tends to get better and breathing difficulties may start to cease on day 13. But some patients may still be affected by mild cough even after hospital discharge. Day 15 to 16. Day 15 is the opposite condition for the rest of the minority patients. The fragile group must prepare for the possibility of acute cardiac injury or kidney injury. Day 17 to 19. COVID-19 fatality cases happen at around day 18. Before the time, vulnerable patients may develop a secondary infection caused by a new pathogen in the lower respiratory tract. The severe condition may then lead to blood coagulation and ischemia. Day 20 to 22. The surviving patients are recovered completely from the disease and are discharged from the hospital. Although um, in the video clip says that um, the signs symptoms from um, day one to day 22, um, very recently the um, UK government has mentioned that uh, apart from the dry cough, dry persistent cough, sore throat and fever, um, they have included officially the loss of uh, taste and uh, smell. Because the virus is spreading so easily, um, the government have given us uh, some advice how to prevent from spreading. And one of them is shielding. Some of you must have received some letters from the doctor saying, um, we need to cause, um, stay at home for a minimum of 12 weeks. Um, shielding from the coronavirus is that some people are more uh, or extremely vulnerable and the virus could kill them. So NHS, um, sent letters to those who are on those categories. And the minimum is about to stay home for 12 weeks on your own. And um, you have to talk to your carers, families and friends who may need support. Um, if you're already concerned about it and you need to um, get advice, we need to call NHS 111 and also the advice not to go to your GP pharmacy. Or the other things that the government asks people not to go is like uh, shopping, unless it is uh, essential shopping, exercise, although initially they say it's once a day, but now they have reviewed it, it's uh, um, more than once a day, or how many times you required, and a special occasion where you have to collect your medications or medicals needs. You should only travel to work if you really have to and um, if you have a disability you can leave your home more than once a day and travel beyond your local area if it is important to your health. If you need people to support you with you, they do not have to stay um, two meters apart from you. It is still important to be careful and only go out when it's really need to, to reduce the chance of getting ill or infected or infecting other people. It is important that you stay at home as much as possible. Something that you should not do, like for example, meeting friends or visiting family in other places, no group more than two people at times. Some things that has been canceled, as you have noticed that most shops are closed, events are have canceled. And if, you're, if you are poorly, you need to stay at home for seven days if you leave on your own. And this is similar to one week. If you are poorly and you leave with other people, you need to stay at home for 14 days. This is the same as the two weeks. Places are closed like if you're used to go to college, that's closed now. Um, even day centers, other activities like swimming pool, restaurant, cafe, and leather, they all close. If you feel really ill and your doctor asks you to go to a hospital or when you call NHS 111, uh, you have to go to two hospitals.
if you have to go to hospitals, you need to take things with you before going. Some things that you need to bring with you are things you have to for washing, clean pajamas, night dress, dressing gown, and your slippers. Things that you need to keep busy, you need also like books, magazine, music, or puzzles, any any in, in, uh, any medication that you need to take each day, we need to take with you. People at the hospital will be able to give you the right medication and treatments that you need. You will notice that they are wearing personal protective equipment. We call it PPE for short, like glasses, apron, gloves, and mask. This will make them look a bit different. It is important that people at the hospital wear the gloves to protect them and others. You will be tested at the hospital to check whether you have the coronavirus. This is so people can help you to get, to get you better. The doctors or the nurses will take two swab um, from like, uh, it looks like a cotton bud. The doctor will put one swab in your mouth and rub it at the back of your throat. Once the doctor or the nurse have done this, they will put together the swab into your nose and rub it around. It might feel uncomfortable, but it will be very quick. The swab will test it to see if you have the coronavirus. If you have it in the ward, you might see other people having the same virus in the same room or all on your own. And you might also see it people um, at the hospitals as are not very well. One thing I would like to mention that um, might not be visitors are allowed while you're in the hospital. If there's a case, maybe only one visitor at a time, maybe a close family member or a support worker who can stay with you. However, you were able to um, speak to your members of family from mobile phone. If you got him small, just um, stop at the hospital, we're able to help you. If you're still feeling poorly in the hospital, um, you might have to take medication that you don't take normally, it would be a different medication. If you're finding hard to breathe, um, the staff at the, um, at the hospital um, will have equipment to help you. Sometimes they call it oxygen. You might see um, you need help with your breathing and they will put a mask around your face to, to give you oxygen. This is called a ventilator. You will be asleep when the ventilator is breathing for you. When you start to get better, you will, will not need the mask or ventilator at all. Again, once you start feeling better, you might want to use the things like you used to, things you brought with you like puzzles, music, or reading books. A lot of people will go to hospital because of the coronavirus, but you will get better and will come home soon. Sadly, some people will get very poorly and they will die. The next slide is about how to protect ourselves against COVID-19. The number of activities or things we can do to stop spreading the virus and getting ill. The first one is the top priority is a good hygiene. And one of the part hygiene is uh, and washings, and there's a special way to wash your hands to make them clean. I'll show you a next uh, video clip about um, maintaining um, how to protect from the coronavirus. COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a new coronavirus introduced to humans for the first time. It is spread from person to person, mainly through the droplets produced when an infected person speaks, coughs or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby. These droplets are too heavy to travel far in the air. They only travel approximately one meter and quickly settle on surfaces. 
This is the reason person-to-person -person spread is happening mainly between close contacts. The exact time that the virus can survive on surfaces is not yet known. So it is wise to clean surfaces regularly, particularly in the vicinity of people infected with COVID-19. Hands touch many surfaces, which can be contaminated with the virus. You should therefore avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth, since contaminated hands can transfer the virus from the surface to yourself. When coughing or sneezing, cover your mouth and nose with the bend of your elbow or use a disposable tissue. If a tissue is used, discard it immediately into a closed bin. The most effective way to prevent the spread of the new coronavirus is to clean your hands frequently with an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. This will eliminate the virus if it is on your hands. Stay healthy and prevent the spread of COVID-19. Once you get better and the coronavirus is not spreading as it should be, um, um, those places you used to, which close will be open again. And um, like colleges, day center, swimming pool, restaurant, cafe, leisure activities and library. But in the meantime, uh, we don't know when until the government will uh, advise us. This is my presentation for today. And there's a lot of information available in the website. Um, one will be the MENCAP, the NHS website, and there's other YouTube um, channels. There's a lot of information if you want to um, get more information about coronavirus and up-to-date information. Thank you for watching and um, stay safe and keep well.